Well, we're really getting down to the nitty-gritty here as far as getting this food plot ready to go. As you can see, there is an awful lot of debris here that that has to be taken care of. And so this, this uh, video is going to go through uh, what it took to get this cleaned up. Now, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here as far as uh, habitat management in the boreal forest, please hit that subscribe uh, button and the notification bell. And uh, as we go along here, you'll get to see all the good things that I do and all the mistakes that I make in order to maybe help you in a journey such as what I'm taking now. You'd hardly know it, but I've already spent a couple of days before uh, this video was taken uh, clearing brush out of here. I had a brush cutter and cut the uh, uh, popple brush out of here and a few of the other bigger uh, pieces of brush and cleaned that out, uh, picked that up and carried it away. But there are an awful lot of uh, resi residue left over from not only years, hundreds of years of forest, but also from when the loggers came in here and, and did their work. Uh, they've left some of this stuff here that uh, uh, complicates things for me a little bit, but it's kind of the nature of, of the beast with, with that. So as you can see here, I'm clearing all the bigger material. I've got some uh, larger sticks and actually some logs that I have to get rid of here. So we're moving those all off to the edge. And uh, hopefully that'll make it easier when I come in with uh, my disc here in a few days. Um, not everything was at a, a size that I could handle like this. I eventually had to uh, get my chainsaw out and do some uh, sawing in order to get some of the other more difficult pieces and then finish cleaning up the big debris from that. I've been pretty excited for uh, this day. I spent a lot of work in order to get this ready to, to try out this new piece of machinery here. Uh, this is called a, a groundhog and it goes on the back of an ATV. Uh, it takes a two inch hitch to, to make it work and uh, I didn't have one on here and so my friend Robin helped me uh, fabricate a two inch receiver in order to make this work on here but the idea behind this is that it's the weight of the four-wheeler that actually provides the downward pressure on these disc blades uh, to do the cutting so we're gonna really test it out today because even though I've spent several days out here 
cleaning up. There's still a lot of debris on the ground and uh, a lot of rocks here. And so we're going to see how well this cuts this up. This is virgin ground. There's not been anything done here other than uh, 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 logging crew having come through and uh, cut the, the timber off of here. So uh, no planting here ever and this will be a real good test of what this machine can do. What I'm going to try to do today is take this and chop up what's left here after the cleaning that I've done. There's uh, a few sticks like this and a little bit of uh, uh, browse or brush that's still here. A lot of rocks. Um, I'm hoping to cut that up into smaller pieces over time. Those will disintegrate into the ground. Uh, it might take a few years, but it will happen, especially if I'm growing a crop over them. It keeps the moisture in and uh, keeps them wet the majority of the time. I'm not going to be able to, to till this up or disc this up like it would be an agricultural plot, but if I can get enough work done where I can get these cut up into smaller pieces and get the ground turned a little bit, I can get good seed to soil contact when I plant here in a few weeks. So um, this is an experiment. It's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, I hope I'm not disappointed. But uh, win or lose, I'll let you know what the results are and how this thing worked and what I might have to do or what I have done in order to make this work or not work. So uh, go ahead and give it a try. The procedure here is that we take the four-wheeler and back it up over some four-inch blocks and get the back end up the ground, off the ground. And then we'll take the, uh, the groundhog and attach it to the hitch. There's an adjustable arm on the, on the top. And so what we'll try to do is that we'll uh, attach it in such a way so that at this point in time, the uh, blades of the disc will actually be a couple of inches below where the tires are going to be. So that as we drive off of the blocks here in just a little bit, we will actually um, uh, cause those blades to go down into the ground a couple of inches and hopefully uh, cut some dirt cut some branches, cut some roots. Now it's going to be a rough ride because on anything that's bigger than just an inch or so it's going to ride up over the top and there are a lot of boulders and some other field stone in here and it will actually go over the top of that so it'll be a little rough going here for a little bit but we'll uh, cross our fingers and hope it goes well.
taking a little break and giving the machine a chance to cool down a little bit. It's a pretty warm day out here in the 70s, so uh, machine's working pretty hard. Uh, kind of a learning curve as far as this uh, groundhog is concerned. Uh, to begin with, they warn you not to be too aggressive as far as how deep you set the blades. And unfortunately, I found that out the hard way. I had them set too deep. And the first thing I did was get down in the corner over behind and got hung up on some roots and got stuck. It took me about almost half an hour to get out of there. I had to jack the machine up and, and take the disc off and, and then reapply and or adjust. So um, lesson learned the hard way on that. In terms of what's happening here, I've been working for probably 45 minutes or so. I uh, took one other little break and picked a little rock and a few bigger pieces of wood out of here but generally speaking it's doing what I expected it to do it's breaking up the the branches here and with the, the little brush it's cutting up the roots and uh, actually digging up the dirt a little bit so hopefully the the bottom line here is that with a little more work today and and uh, uh, a little bit of help I think uh, we'll probably get this cleaned up to a point where I can get something to grow here so pretty happy with it You can see the good and the bad here of what I have to work with. I've got some dirt that uh, works out pretty well, and then I've got some stumps and some big boulders that I have to deal with. But generally speaking, you can see here we've uh, been able to break down much of what's been uh, uh, laying around here. Now, I do have some uh, sticks that size that are broken up and actually end up being very easy to uh, rake. So what I've decided to do is um, after I've gone over with the the disc for oh probably an hour and a half is what I've worked this with the disc uh, I'm going to rake up uh, that debris and pull it out of there and really have a good surface in order to uh, work with um, you can see I've got a couple of helpers here today the kids dogs are with me today but um, this stuff is fairly easy to rake. There's a little bit of uh, brush that I have to get hung up on a little bit, but for the most part, not too bad. Uh, I have the ability to take a lot of the, the field stone size rocks out of here and clean those up. Uh, the idea being that uh, anytime there's a rock there, that's going to prevent any uh, crop from growing there. So the more of those that I can get out, the more seeds will germinate and create some... Uh, some plant food for me so uh, really uh, really happy with how this is coming out I will have this ready to plant here before too long uh, I'm gonna wait until I ha don't have to worry about freeze anymore uh, I'm gonna start with some buckwheat and we'll talk about that a little bit later but um, generally speaking I should uh, have this ready to go in another day's worth of, uh, of work and will give me some time to get ready for planting about the first week of June or so. Now you can see here um, as I'm finishing up this raking there's a little bit of a before uh, what it looked like. Uh, I did have the the popple brush cut out of here when I did this video but none of the debris and a lot of the other stuff was still there so that's the before and here's the after. So quite a difference. I, I'm really happy with the way this, this project is progressing. 